Hey yo, hey everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video review, and today we're going to be continuing my top 10 countdown to my favorite Batman stories and graphic novels of all time. Now, remember, these are not what I think are the best stories, just the ones that I like the most. Of course, chances are, most of them are probably the best Batman stories out there. So with that said, we're on to number 5. So coming in at number 5 on the top 10 countdown would be... Batman R.I.P. Oh, Batman R.I.P. Uh, this is my fifth favorite Batman story, at least right now, and I, I kind of wanted to include all Grant Morrison stuff on Batman up to this point, uh, because really, you know, Batman and Son and um, Batman Black Love, it makes Batman R.I.P. what it is, but um, if I had to pick just one story from it, it would probably be R.I.P. And Great Morrison has even done his run on Batman. This is only the midway point, but we'll get into that later. Um, R.I.P. and I kind of got off on the wrong foot. Because when I heard Grant Morrison was doing R.I.P., he said that he was going to change the Batman mythos forever. Um, and I was concerned that he was going to do something that would negatively affect Batman. Or at least negatively affect Batman for me. Now, a lot of people, one thing I have to give this book is a lot of people talked about it on the internet. A lot of people did speculation, um, and did, like, try to piece together all the clues that Grant Morrison was laying down. Um, I went to several message boards just reading extensively all the conversations people were having, and it was really quite interesting. Uh, one, uh, one theory was that Batman, because of the isolation chamber, Batman was going to, uh, have the mentality of the Joker. Um, another one was that uh, Batman was really black gloves, and that he had four personalities, Bruce Wayne, Batman, Batman Azura, whatever it's called, and then the black glove personality, and Bruce Wayne is really person uh, black gloves. Um, another one was um, obviously t uh, Dr. Hurt being uh, his father, uh, Dr. Wayne, or Thomas Hurt, uh, uh, Dr. Hurt being uh, the devil, or Dr. Hurt being dark side, so there were some theories about that. There was um, also the theories that Batman was going to die, and then there was the biggest theory of all that I was concerned about is Batman was going to kill someone. And that one concerned me a lot, because see, if Batman died, Batman would come back to life. And Batman kind of died in, our, uh, in Final Crisis. He didn't really necessarily die, his body just died and everyone thinks he's dead. Batman's still alive, he's just in the Omega Sanction. That's what people keep on thinking, that Bruce is dead. No, he's in the Omega Sanction, but... Uh, see, if Batman died in R.I.P., it, it would bother me, but I would always know he would come back. But see, if Batman killed someone, he would be doing the one thing that helps to find his character. Batman never kills. Ever. Um, it's his golden rule, and if Batman did that, it would ruin Batman for me. Um, and a lot of people would say, well, Andrew, he shot Darkseid. He shot Darkseid, and one could consider that... Uh, contributes to Darkseid's fa uh, fatal wound, the, the thing that kills Darkseid, but, you know, Superman does it too, so, Superman saying the note. Plus it's Darkseid. Darkseid's not human, Darkseid's an evil god, and Batman was put into a situation which probably should have. So, I let that slide, but if Batman killed someone, that would have just put it over the edge for me. Uh, luckily that didn't happen. So, I could let go of all that fear that I had for R.I.P. and enjoy it for what it was. Um, and R.I.P. is something that you really have to read Batman and Son and then Black Glove to really enjoy, more so than just enjoying it on its own, because there's a lot of hints and clues and a lot of elements in the previous Grant Morrison's writing that show up in this, that really make this story for what it was. Uh, there's so many layers to this story, too, and it's very complex. Um, I really like how the Joker was portrayed in this. Because the Joker, although he was going around killing people, kind of working for Black Glove, I liked how he had that conversation with Black Glove saying, well, you guys are basically screwed. Batman's going to come back, haul your asses to jail. He's just going to kick your ass. It's Batman. Uh, I, I kind of like the portrayal of Joker because Joker, Joker was, I don't know, he, he, he seemed kind of neutral. Uh, I, I don't know how to explain it. I don't want to say he was working, uh, he was kind of cheering for Batman, but he kind of knew what the deal was. He's just saying, like, oh, you guys had fun doing evil deeds, but Batman's going to get you. Uh, I also, you know, like I said, there's a lot of layers and a lot of uh, depth to this book, but the one thing that 
stood out for me is this is a book that shows how great Batman is. Now, there's a lot of themes to this, but the one that stood out to me is just that no matter what situation you put Batman in, Bruce Wayne, no matter what you do to him, he always comes back and he always finds a way of defeating you. I mean, he, he's put in a shallow grave, he gets out, he's attacked from all angles of his life. Uh, the whole time that, uh, that Black Love thought they were screwing with Batman, he was screwing with them. He knew what their plans were, he knew about Jezebel Jet being evil, he knew everything, he, he was toying with them. Uh, well, not everything, but he knew the gist of what was going down, so he was toying with them. Um, and he created a third personality for psychological defenses. I mean, Batman, it, this is, to me, proves just how great Batman is. Uh, my only problem with this book is the fact that I thought the ending could have been explained a little bit better. You know, Bruce Wayne goes into the ocean. It's not until the uh, last right story do you find out how this transitions over into Final Crisis. But um, I also don't like the fact that Joker and... Commissioner Gordon who know who Batman is. Now, this is bittersweet for me, this is kind of torn for me, because on one hand, I do like it, because it's like, well, it just shows how complex the Joker is. He doesn't see Bruce Wayne, he only sees Batman, um, which is kind of an interesting thing. Um, and then Commissioner Gordon kind of just shows that Gordon probably knew Batman, Bruce Wayne was Batman since the year one. He probably just doesn't care. Which shows up in No Man's Land when Batman tries to reveal his identity to Commissioner Gordon. He doesn't care. He says, it's not the person under the mask that I care about. It's the person with the mask on. Uh, but on the other hand, it's just like too many people know Batman's identity. So, shit happens. But those are only minor gripes. Uh, but this story is actually very fantastic. And it's a story that I hated when I first heard about it. And I really started to love it. Um, it really has... a a lot of depth, a lot of layers, great themes in this, and it's a very complex story. Uh, very complex, and um, I give credit to where credit's due, and Grant Morrison did a very good job on this. Very good job. Um, again, you need to get the other two books to really truly enjoy it, but fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So with that said, oh, and Tony Daniel, um, his art is really good. I like his art. Uh, where he may not be my favorite artist, um, he does a very good job. I like his stuff on the Titans a little bit better than his stuff on Batman, but, um, he did a pretty good job, so the art is pretty nice, too. Uh, with the exception of Joker. I don't like how Joker looks. I don't know. But, I don't know. Whatever. So, with that said, um, again, you can join the countdown anytime you want. It's a obscure topic, but go right ahead if you want to join. Join. Uh, people will see my video, then they'll go see yours, and hey, maybe people will subscribe to you, who knows. But, uh, yeah, Batman R.I.P., great story, uh, number five on my list. So with that said, till next week, this is Andrew saying peace out for now.